Welcome back to Radical Music Reviews. Um, just a point of clarification, my last video I made a mistake with regards to the Cars video. Um, the Cars actually, um, they collaborated with uh, Bruce Fairburn, not uh, Mutt Lang, as I said before, so it was Bruce Fairburn. Um, okay, so I actually, on the way to work today, I was thinking about the next band coming up, and um, I thought the next one in the alphabet from my A to Z, which is what I'm doing, was uh, the Clash, but I actually have a couple bands between um, the Cars and the Clash. I got a few bands actually um, that I will review, but I was in the Clash frame of mind, so I like to talk about them. Um, so the Clash, I don't know how much everyone knows about the Clash, but they're one of the most important bands um, in music in the late '70s and early '80s, and they made what is, in my opinion, the most important album of the 1980s. Um, is it the best album? Maybe. An argument can be made that it was the best album of the 80s. Um, but the word best or greatest is subjective. What my best is, is could be your worst. And you know what, that, that's why we have all this music is because diversity, it's a fun thing. Um, the Clash started in 1977 with their self-titled uh, debut album, The Clash. Now, punk rock um, was a result of a lot of disenfranchised feelings of economy, um, of joblessness, um, of particularly in the UK, of uh, the monarchy, um, not paying taxes, they still don't pay taxes. Um, and um, this angry revolution came out in music called punk rock. And um, it, it was also a result of um, a lot of bands like um, the Beatles and Led Zeppelin and the Stones um, a lot of the youth was sick of that music. It's seen its time and it's time to do something else. So you have that anger and that angst fused with something new and you had punk. Now, who started punk? Well, you know, the Sex Pistols um, certainly uh, were spearheading the punk movement as well as um, uh, the Ramones, the New York Dolls. Um, but those bands, they, couldn't play their instruments great. And that was part of punk. It was just uh, a loud onslaught of music. And um, it was relevant for a lot of youth at the time. But The Clash with this album sounded like that, but it really wasn't. They could play their instruments and they were really great musicians. Um, this is probably the best early punk album of the big bands that came out. Nevermind the Bullocks by the Sex Pistols, of course, um, was a big hit, but um, if you want to investigate The Clash, this is where you should start. It's uh, a premier punk album, very good, straight ahead, hard punk rock, um, talking a lot of, about a lot of great issues um, of the time. Um, and uh, after um, The Clash came out, um, they had another album called, um, I think it was called Give Them Enough Rope, which um, in between that and their third album was kind of a transition. Um, it didn't play out as well as this album, um, and it really wasn't until their third album, which I'm going to talk a little extensively about, um, that um, The Clash changed. Now, in support of their first two albums, they toured um, the, the United States, and they, they played with a lot of bands, Sam and Dave, a lot of R&B groups, rockabilly groups, um, jazz, rock, punk, and their style changed. Their style of music changed. Um, and they came out in uh, 19, December of 79, it came out in the UK, January of 1980 came out in North America. Um, one of the greatest albums ever made, and in my opinion, the most important album of the 1980s, London Calling. I don't have it. I don't know why. It's a crime. If you're thinking about getting me something for Christmas, London Calling. Um, London Calling was... Um, a real transition in music. When The Clash came back from their tour in the United States, um, they had all these different styles of music. And um, what made that album great was two reasons. The politics of what they were talking about and the music. Now, I am um, a student of political science and history. Um, my um, library is uh, full of uh, political science books, history books, um, and in the late 1970s, um, there was a lot of problems happening in the United Kingdom. 
Um, the economy was bad. The, the capitalist economy was um, creating a, a greater divide between the rich and the poor. There was an immigration issue, a lot of um, African immigration um, and uh, Jamaican immigration was causing um, these parties, these uh, right-wing fascist uh, racist parties to vie for power um, in the British Parliament. Um, there was also a high jobless rate. There was high inflation. And so this disenfranchised youth who didn't feel that they could get a foothold um, in, in the job market, in the, uh, in the real estate market, um, these were all things that The Clash sang about. Uh, they sang about climate change before climate change was in vogue to talk about. They sang, sang about the, uh, the uh, economy um, and uh, the disparity in the economy. They sang about a lot of issues on London Calling that are still relevant today. And there's a lot of bands ahead of them, behind them, certainly in the 1960s, the protest rock, the Vietnam War. Um, but they touched upon a lot of issues. Um, U2 in the 1980s certainly touched upon a lot of political issues um, and uh, later in the 1990s Rage Against the Machine fantastic band Rage Against the Machine I can't wait to get to them but London Calling was a transition in music and it was an important album musically you had reggae now reggae was from Jamaica was a uh, protest music in Jamaica if you don't know about Jamaican history you should look it up it's fantastic United States and Russia during the Cold War vied for power to try and take control of Jamaica, but they used gangs in Russia. It was very violent. Bob Marley, Bunny Whaler, um, Peter Tosh, um, Bob Marley and the Whalers, they did music that was protest music and that just shot across the world. Um, Bob Marley, one of the bravest musicians I've ever read about. Um, really close to my heart, Bob. Can't wait to get to him too. So you had all this fusion. You had ska, punk, rock, reggae, rockabilly, jazz, um, and it was a fantastic album. I cannot stress to you how great London Calling is. It is a fantastic album. Um, and we all know a lot of the, we know the song London Calling. Um, also Train in Vain, the, the, the song that closed the album is a fantastic piece of music. Um, uh, moving on after that, they did uh, Sandinista, which was their uh, fourth album. Um, it's a, and I should say London Calling was a double album too, and that's pretty ballsy to put out a double, al double album and every song is genius. Um, Sandinista um, tried to um, mimic what um, uh, London Calling did in, in a way, um, but it didn't quite um, rise up to that level. Um, it, it can sound a little trying, even though there are some really uh, fantastic um, songs on this record. Um, and, uh, and then in 19, I think it was 1980, let me just get the light here, 82, 82, they came out with uh, combat rock. A lot of people said that they were selling out with this album, that they had abandoned their political ideologies. Um, but, um, I'll argue that, um, I think this is a great album. Um, should I stay or should I go rock the Casbah? You know, those songs, fantastic songs. Like, this is a really great album. Was it as important? As London Calling? No, not by a long shot, but it's still a great album. Um, and uh, of course, the other one I have here too is uh, Black Market Clash. This was an album that was released um, and it was a lot of B-sides um, after uh, London Calling came out. Um, it's a pretty good record too, check it out. Um, I don't wanna make this a long-winded video, but um, I, I will stress that The Clash, for a short time, were the greatest band in the world. And um, I, I really feel that, you know, in, in the late 70s and 80s, early 80s, um, a lot of people took notice of The Clash, what they were singing about, how they were playing, and why they played music. Um, and uh, just a fantastic band. Thanks for watching. Next up, I mean, I'll give you a little hint. We've got um, one of my favorite guitarists coming up. There's a country album in there. And there's another band who's uh, going to be playing with ZZ Top coming up. Can't wait to talk about them. So... Um, until next time.